Hey, this is Charles Onyet with IGN. I'm here with Anthony Gallegos. Hello. Anthony, you reviewed Call of Duty Black Ops 2 for IGN. I did. You said it was a good game. I think it's a it's a really awesome game. There's a th the three components of it just add. There's so much to that them that there's a reason that at least on PC they're like three separate EXEs because they are almost they basically are three separate games in one game. Yeah, and and that's what uh, I wanted to go over here was the PC version and the three parts of the game. The the multiplayer competitive portion, uh, the zombies mode, and uh, the campaign. And here I'm just going through, these are the graphic settings so you can see uh, what this looks like, what are the options that you have for uh, customizing your experience. And I mean, uh, Anthony, you've been playing the PC version a little bit uh, since it launched. Uh, would you say it looks significantly better than the console version? I would a say a little bit better. I would say it looks. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily go so far as to say significantly, because obviously it's it, the engine is is very much showing its age these days for these games. But it still looks good, and on PC you're going to get way sharper. Like the aliasing is obviously way better than it is on either console. Um, and and yeah, you can do more with the texture. So yeah, it is the best looking. But I still think it looks it looks good on the consoles. But yeah, it it still looks pretty great on PC. Um, and it performs pretty well too, from what we've seen so far. Yeah, I haven't experienced uh, any performance things. Um, so Anthony, what what am I looking at here? So th these are the classes that yeah, I mean, yeah. anyone who's played Call of Duty, which so you're, a lot of people uh, are familiar with this, but this is uh, this is basically how you build your custom classes. Yeah, you're here. over level five, so now you can create classes and. Uh, the create class system is different now because now it's uh, this pick ten system is what they call it. And so if you look in the upper right hand corner, you can see every everything in your loadout has a value of one. Um, and so each thing, yeah. So the gun, the attachments, everything has a value of one. And so any combination you can do up to ten is possible. So in this case, uh, you can pick a second perk because you have a uh, what's called a wild card here in the bottom. These allow you to break the rules of the game, the rules that normally say like you can only have three perks. Well, you can take perk one greed. That allows you to take a second uh, perk in your perk one slot, which would mean you, you could have four perks. Um, you can actually build classes right. with, like, you know, five perks. and But basically, when you do that, there's an opportunity cost. So in this case, if you want to take uh, that extra perk, you're going to have to lose something, whether that's, you know, your lethal grenade, your tactical, your pistol, or an attachment for your weapon. Yeah, that seems like, I mean, concussion grenades are pretty useful. They are, and but even more than that... It, it, EMP grenades are really useful too because they also still stun and slow people and screw up their vision. And against uh, turrets, they're the best way to take them out. Uh, in previous Call of Duty games, you could knife turrets and destroy them really easy, but they com they got rid of that. In this one, turrets are hard to kill without EMP grenades. Okay, so I mean, if I wanted to take that extra perk, I could drop uh, like this uh, quick draw handle on my gun, my attachment here. Um, yeah, and the attachments too are different now too because the attachments are basically some of the perks. Uh, in the previous games used to be tied to some things that now benefit attachments. So anything that benefits your physical character is a perk. Anything that benefits your weapon is always going to be an attachment. So for instance, the ability to do fast reload would have been sleight of hand in previous games and now it's a fast mag. It's a double-sided two mags taped together. Um, or that, that handle is actually what replaces one of the faster aiming perks from previously. The quick draw handle. Yeah, I don't know if I necessarily want to drop anything. Uh, maybe uh, I mean, I was just saying the so concussion me, grenades. So me, I are, almost are find that I almost never switch to my pistol in the heat of battle, so it's almost useless for me to take. Huh. So sometimes I'll remove that and take, so like... So you just, you just wipe out the secondary altogether. I do. Just, and just then, do that with the X button here, and I'll yeah, just Yeah, like and, and then I take uh, this, the hard line, which gives you faster... Uh, uh, score streaks. Okay, and I need, I need to use a token to unlock Yeah, this. so as you're leveling up, you're getting unlock tokens. In the old Black Ops, there was like, you earned like basically like cash, and you could spend that cash to unlock what you wanted when you wanted. This is more traditional, where it's like certain things are behind level restrictions, obviously, and then even once you've reached the level requirement, you have to spend a token to unlock it. But they give tokens pretty liberally when you level up, so you will have to make some choices along the way, but most of the time you can pretty much always get what you want. Okay, and score streaks, I mean, so this is, this doesn't say kill streaks, it says score no. streaks. Um, um, so I, how, how exactly does this So in Team work? Deathmatch, they function a lot like uh, kill streaks, because the way you're getting it is that you look in the bottom, and each of these three things in your score streaks, they all have a value associated with them. So, you know, typically getting a kill is worth 100 points, so if you get three and a half kills, you can get your UAV. But then... Be, uh, they want you to feel like you're getting closer to another, you know, streak uh, benefit, even if you're not necessarily getting kills. So, like, for instance, if you were to do your first score streak call in a UAV, every time someone got a kill while your UAV was up, you'd get 10 points towards your next score streak. So there are a, a lot more ways to earn those than just getting kills. 
and even when you're playing like a a a, a, a like a something like you know uh, t sorry capture the flag that sort of thing you know more than just tdm you'll be earning a lot more points like if you kill a flag character it's worth a massive amount of points compared to killing a normal guy which will give you a huge boost towards a skill, uh a score streak. Okay, so yeah, it's just more of an incentive to participate in the in in the actual objective portion of the objective base mode. Correct. Yeah. Um, um, all right. Well, I guess I'm going to hop into a team deathmatch mode and hopefully not embarrass myself. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. So <laughs> I might. You're only level seven, which means if you wanted, you could still be playing combat training where it's half people, half bots. Um, that's in there as an option for some people. Well, that's not exciting, though. <laughs> no. The bots, I will say, if you put the bots on the hardest AI difficulty, like in a custom game, they are brutal. So They're they, really challenging? Yeah. Like they, in a cheap kind of way? or in a uh, I feel like they just feel kind of like people. Like I, when I play against them, they feel... I, I die pretty much to them just like I would people. And they do less cheap things like, uh, you know, crouch in a place where no one else would think about crouching. They don't really camp as much. Oh, my God. It's happening. We're oh, loading yeah. into a map. In Kyrgyzstan. But yeah, it all. I mean, it all. It, it, the game moves very quickly in terms of loading, in terms of getting you into a match. It all, you know, it, it gets you with players and and going all without with minimal delays. Yeah, and so you can see that all the the multiplayer takes place in 2025. Uh, you know, the campaign kind of jumps around in time, but the this is all 2025. So, for instance, the gun he's using, MTAR. I don't. That's not a real gun, but it's based off of like the actual tar that currently exists. Um, and then. And then oh you my god! I got a kill. And then even something. I'm like, so excited right now. Yeah, and you're, the, you're also <laughs> constantly earning little additional experience for like you were the first kill in the whole match, so you got an additional experience bonus for that. Um, oh my god! Where are they? They're going to pop out of yeah, somewhere. Yeah, they can be up on the second floor of that building to your left and too. Knife me on a, in the face or something. So. No, it looks like we've got some guys in there. What do you think of the map design in this game compared to previous Call of Duties? You know, I think uh, I enjoy playing all the maps. Though I will say, I, I was kind of talking with Marty, uh, the reviewer from One Up, about this that. Um, for me, I really like the yacht. Uh, there's a giant super yacht level that I think is a lot of fun, but I, I will say that there's nothing that quite stood out to me in the same way as like a Nuketown in that. But, you know, I will say that if you got a special edition or you did a pre-order, there's, they have Nuketown. And if you want to, you can play Nuketown 24-7. There's like a option just to play Nuketown all the time. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I think they did a, they did a good job with them. They're actually all, uh... Like, they keep everyone focused well enough. Like, I'm amazed that you haven't seen someone in even this short amount of time. Uh, it looks like there's somebody behind me. And, uh, but I feel like as soon as I turn around, I'm going to get shot. I think your team got him, too. Maybe. He's probably dead. It looks like there's a lot of guys converging yeah. on that position. Um, but, th but they've also made him small oh. enough. They've also made him small enough that they're all really easy to earn. I mean, to learn. Like, I one or two playthroughs, and you already kind of have a good feel for them, which is nice. Yeah, I noticed. I mean, I've I've only been playing a little bit uh, since launch. Um, obviously, since I'm just uh, level seven. But yeah, the ma the maps are not uh, large at all. They're no. they're pretty contained. But I mean, there's always, th from what I've seen so far, and I mean, I obviously I don't know all of the map layouts, but I do get the sense that for every entrance there is to a particular cover area, there's uh, nice. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's hard <laughs> to speak when they, when you gotta get a headshot. Um, um, but but yeah, for for every area that there's cover, there's always uh, a kind of exit. There's another way to. Uh, that guy just threw a friggin' grenade in here. Come <laughs> here, buddy. I think I think you're okay. No, he's probably gonna come up the back stairs. Is my guess. He's um, gonna, but yeah, I'm gonna go cover the stairwell. I feel like the maps are pretty well designed. There's no place where you can just kind of camp and be totally safe. Um, and the whole point of them being kind of smaller, and obviously like when you're playing on team deathmatch, uh, at least you know you can immediately on PC hit F to respawn. Like, there is no downtime in this whatsoever. You are always fighting, and that's always been a big important thing. You can watch the replay, uh, your kill cam, if you want, but uh, there's not really a need for that. Yeah, and don't they have more uh, kind of casting options, I guess you could say? or Yeah, you can do uh, you can do your COD casting on, any, on a match that you record, so it's just like a built-in shout casting feature. You can also, in League Play, uh, you can live stream your games. Uh, but to do that, you have to at least have 10 people log on to the URL. So basically, you have to have some sort of social following to be able to put the link out there and be like, I'm in a live stream. So then when 10 people get going, then it'll allow you to actually live stream. Okay. So, the, I mean, they're basically just checking to make sure you're not just wasting it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like Broadcasting they, they, they to can nobody. Only, exactly. They can only, I think they, they can only handle so much. So they want to at least make sure that people are watching the stream. Um, uh, so, I mean, in terms of the, oh, damn, I thought that was a guy. Oh well. Uh, in terms of the, ooh, there is a guy up there. 
I think or, you, I think or you got is him. there? Yes. Oh. He's totally dead. Um, I mean, do do you think Call of Duty? I mean, are are you still? I, I mean, I guess you are, but do, where where does it go from here exactly? Because I mean, the the mode has has become such a huge, you know, feature. Uh, oh, uh, what? Uh, yeah, you pumped. Fe feature rich kind of uh, experience like there are so many modes in the game now and so many different ways to play that it's like what what keeps happening like I know. How, how does it how does it evolve from this point when it's, it's just this huge monster of of multiplayer features it's tough to say because at some point it's like a you know i i to some degree i get the criticism that people throw out there sometimes that call of duty every year is like paying for a new map pack but you know, obviously, the when they come out each year, it's also a package put together with with a, oh si a single player component, zombies or spec ops if it's the Infinity Ward main games. Um, and so, for for as far as multiplayer, it's, it's tough to say how they evolve it. Um, you know, obviously, there are enough people who love it just for what it is that they want new maps and that they want uh, those things enough that they're willing to buy it every year, and that doesn't necessarily bother them because of how much time they could put out of it, but. Uh, to some extent, I feel like to evolve it eventually, you need to almost like offer the c the c the multiplayer component separately and just have it be its own sort of single player. Like, I mean, I could see Call of Duty being a free to play shooter someday. The just the multiplayer component, because for so many people, that's all they care about. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, I uh, I mean, even I I've been guilty of of buying a new Call of Duty and just and I I mean, I don't know if guilty is necessarily the right word, but just going directly to the multiplayer and be like, "Oh, there's a campaign. Yeah, all right, cool." And then immediately playing multiplayer. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I know plenty of people. Um I'm pretty sure that our Bobby Amos who works here at IGN, he never plays the campaigns at all. He immediately just pops it in and does nothing but multiplayer. And that's funny because Bobby all he does is play Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> I know, he has <laughs> a special still, controller. And he's still skipping the campaign. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, it's hard to say how it no. evolves. I think the pick tens thing is a is a great example of how to make the created class interesting again, you know, because it's been the same ever since Modern Warfare, pretty much. Um, so that's that's a great step. But as far as, like, what they can really do, I don't know. It's Add like, vehicles? Is, yeah. Is that sacrilege? I don't. Well, uh, World at War had a couple of tanks, and it was pretty terrible. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I mean, maybe if they could find a way to do vehicles, but then I guess, you know, I... I Is I, it really Call of Duty anymore? Yeah, then I don't know how if it'd be really too slow-paced. I don't really know if they could do it that way. Because, I mean, yeah, it's definitely the type of... I mean, if you've never played Call of Duty, it's super fast-paced the whole time. It's just, you know... Oh, my it, God. Um, hit, I'm, I'm trying to, hit, to not die, considering I, I was not playing so well earlier. I think if you hit three, you'll use your UAV. All right, here we go. Yeah. It's happening. I just called it in. So now, if anybody gets a kill while your UAV's up, see, you oh, get I'm 10 getting points. UAV assist. Nice. So those are those are working towards your next score streak. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, so you can see the score streak meter in the in the bottom. Yeah, and that's showing how close you are to your plane. You know, it's a little thermometer bar. So that you're you're almost there. If you get another kill, you would you would probably get your airstrike. Okay, I would like an airstrike. I would like somebody to just pop directly out of there so that I can kill them. Hey, that guy just threw an explosive over there. I guess I don't really have to worry about that, though. See, this is this is the problem. That's when you get close to a score streak, you immediately start trying to take it careful. No, I'm starting to get nervous. I know. Because I don't want to mess it up. Smoke grenade. Should I go through? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna, uh, yeah. He is. That guy is having a great time over there. I um, would appreciate if I'm not killed or if more people could make some kills while this is going on. You know, the next... Up, up, up. Come on, buddy. I can shoot him through that. Hey, right? Oh, oh, damn it. The next evolution of a Call of Duty... Uh, a Call of Duty multiplayer I could see maybe is uh, if, if the next one is for like a next gen system and there's like a really big step in the engine, that sort of thing, I could see it being, you know, involving more of the environment in it. So, uh, you know, they've always had the ability to shoot through light pieces of cover, but it's never necessarily been something uh, as significant as, you know, the ability to chip away walls. So almost encroaching on some of that territory that maybe something like Bad Company did where there's actually terrain deformation could really change up the speed of Call of Duty. Yeah, actually, I guess that's a good point. Especially, yeah, like you're, I mean, heading into the next generation when they're, you know, they can consider uh, some increased uh, hardware, at least for, for consoles. I mean, yeah. obviously PCs are so far ahead of consoles at this point that, you right. know, I mean, you're essentially playing a quote-unquote next-gen experience right now. Uh, on a PC, but but as they, I mean, they have to focus their development across consoles as well. Yeah, and I think the, you know the the, the mantra has always been to make sure that it runs super super fast, so you get that super fast control response. And so, uh, you know, they they 
that will always be a concern that on the current gen of hardware, yeah, I mean, they could do what bad company does with train deformation and that sort of thing, but it would be at the cost of some of that frame rate Whoa. and performance issues that, you know, are very precious to Call of Duty players. That guy shot me right in the face. Yeah, he quick scoped you. That was pretty impressive. Just, uh, I didn't really have a chance on that. <laughs> I was like, I thought that was a sure kill, and then he's just like, nope. Guess what? I have a sniper rifle, and I see your face. Yeah, that's the biggest thing on uh, PC, is I really hope that uh, they stay on top of managing the, the sort of anti-cheat services. Oh, crap. So. This is the worst. Oh, my God. Thank God I killed that guy. I was spraying all over the place wildly. Nice. I I'm think sorry. What were you I, saying? I, I, I got think you just unlocked a new perk. Um, there you go. Sniper down. Right there, you got additional experience for killing someone that I think he was the guy that killed you last. I think there's a guy right there. Yeah. Nice. You uh, saved uh, someone. Uh, so you got additional experience for saving someone, too. Okay. Uh, uh, no, I'm getting UAV assist again. I don't know if I'm actually going to build up to that next. Uh, it's really, I will say in TDM, it's, it's in my opinion, it is really hard to get uh, score streaks. Yeah, you just leveled up. Oh, yeah. So See, I, li level now. I like that they make all that stuff pretty unintrusive, though. It's all in the upper third and the center, and so... It, Crap. I felt like in some of the past Call of Duties, they made it like so blaringly gigantic in your screen. And you're like, <laughs> here it is. Bah, 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 bah. And you're yeah, like, it basically just looked like a <laughs> slot machine. <laughs> exactly. There's just giant, uh, obnoxious, uh, like custom tags flying up all over the place. Yay. Yeah, you guys, you guys pulled it out. It was a close game, though. So much experience. Um, but yeah, now, now that we've uh, checked out a little, I mean, obviously there are way more modes that you can play in, uh, in Black Ops 2. Um, but yeah, I'll check out the, the campaign and uh, the zombies. Oh. Wow, that was actually a pretty... I wish that ledge wasn't in the way, because that was kind of an awesome... Hey, uh, you were top on your team, by the way. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, that was uh, that was very lucky. Basically, you, <laughs> you won that for them. Well, also, their team was totally depleted. They had nobody left. Um, but, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, let us switch over to the campaign and uh, see how the single-player portion goes. So now we're uh, checking out the uh, campaign here. And uh, about to do some awesome wingsuiting. Yeah, it does say <laughs> wingsuit on the screen. I'm assuming something cool will happen as a result of that. Well, I don't know if you ever watched. Uh, there are people that do this for real. No, I actually <laughs> have seen. I've seen footage of them and also footage of them crashing, which <laughs> looks absolutely terrifying. I can't <laughs> believe people actually do this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is just one of those things. that's so called duty, right? Well, the, where they'll make you do something totally ridiculous, and it'll be like a one-off thing. This is the only time you know you'll ever do this, but. Uh, Oh yeah. So you don't actually shoot people while you're doing this. There's no wingsuit slash sniper mission. No, this is <laughs> this is just so you can feel like a total, uh, a totally awesome while you're infiltrating this compound. Okay, so this is still pretty early on in the Black Ops 2 uh, campaign mode, but I mean, Anthony, what, what you you've completed this mode before? Oh yeah. Um, what uh, you know? What would you say about this mode overall? I think you know this is. I think uh, obviously Call of Duty comes out every year. You know, there's a lot of fatigue uh, in people who are just like, oh, it's the same game every time. But that's not necessarily true of every single Call of Duty game. Yeah, no. I mean, I've always thought the Black Ops, uh, the first Black Ops had a, a one of the better Call of Duty stories. Um, but it wasn't necessarily amazing. Um, and this one, I think, is is really great. You know, it's uh, it's written by this guy at the studio, the, the design director, David Anthony, and then Dave Goyer. David Goyer, you know, who wrote The Dark Knight and Blade 3, I think. Just Blade 3 or 2? Two? 2. Blade 2, you're right. Blade 2. Okay, because Blade 3 is a whole different thing. Um, and so, uh, and so you know, it's it's actually a really coherent uh, narrative, and I and I feel like there's, like, a really great bad guy to it, and I think that it does certain things with the story that are very different from typical Call of Duty games. Because um, there's choice involved with it, right? Yeah, and choice, and not even choice. Uh, it's, it's Sometimes it's choice, and then sometimes it's just consequence. Like, maybe you didn't... Like it might, t it, there are certain levels that will make you think that you are incapable of, uh, of. Oh, sorry, I'm getting distracted by this cool scope. Um, <laughs> that will make you think that you cannot uh, save someone, for instance, and you totally can. And it won't be until you get to the end it'll be like, you do, you did not manage to save this person. You'll be like, oh, I didn't even know that was something that could happen. And then that will affect uh, how things kind of proceed towards the end. Um, so right now I'm actually playing in a mission that takes place in the future, which is why there are people uh, in cloaked armor. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, the storyline does uh, swap around. You're not always in the kind of near future scenario that you're in now. It will go back to, I think it's the 80s? Yeah, uh, so there's... there's oh, yeah, there's missions in the 80s. So right now I'm playing as uh, 
the the game from the first game's protagonist. Uh, so I'm playing as the younger Mason, um, and you kind of switch between the younger Mason and the older Mason. And then this is Harper, who's like the the one of the best uh, side characters in the game. I believe he's voiced by Michael Rucker. You know, the guy that also played uh, Merle, the terrible racist he in The Walking in Dead. No, yes, he was also in Nobody can forget his role He in was also the dad in Mallrats, yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's funny when you get to these future tech uh, areas too, we get to see some examples of the gun, like this one, which is an A94, which is pretty much uh, just a the, the what they imagine the future equivalent of the AK-47 will be. Um, and also, yeah, you, you also have these really cool uh, flexible screens on your wrist. Th most of it feels very Call of Duty, though, even though there's, like, this future tech sort of thing going on. Like, even the way that you you do grenades, they try and put, like, a little spin on it, but it's still very much there. Like, uh, you will notice in multiplayer you don't have the ability to use wrist-mounted grenade launching, but in this, in single player, you totally do. Um, yeah, and again, it runs very smooth on PC. This is, uh, you know, it's not the, the greatest uh, PC. This is not, like, an ultra top-of-the-line machine. We have the settings turned all the way up. Um, and we're getting very good performance. Uh, you know that that seems to be a thing that that happens fairly regularly with uh, with Call of Duty games. Uh, pushing my luck there, trying to show. Th there are always these things throughout the uh, these moments throughout the level where there are little consoles you can access, little armor boxes that you can open. You don't have to at all. Um, it's just something you can do to kind of maybe get something in the battlefield that you might not have otherwise had. I'll play a little bit smarter though. Um, How would you say the encounter design in Black Ops 2 compares to uh, some of the some of the more recent uh, Call of Duty adventures? Um, I'd say it's pretty similar in the sense that you know they're, you're still going to encounter the AI that that you know basically their job is right. They don't sit there and run around and get crazy. They stop and pop, and if you get behind cover too long, they'll throw a grenade to flush you out. Um, in that sense, I don't feel like it feels that different, um, but you know you will get some variation in the sense like these guys that have this invisible camo it encourages you to sort of do things like use your EMP grenades to disable their camo to see them or you need to have a weapon like this one which has like a mimetic wave uh, scope that allows you to basically see guys even though they're they're invisible um, yeah I mean I've always felt that the the Call of Duty campaigns are more and more just kind of the spirit of the 80s like the 80s action movies oh, yeah. lives on and in, in, in that it's just completely ridiculous impossible um, but it's all about just kind of delivering as many explosions as it possibly can and as many scenarios where it <laughs> it leads up to you and you're like oh man am I actually gonna be able to get to see that or use that and then of course you do yeah I mean like th <laughs> like this part right like oh they're basically just feeding me guys to kill right now you know just fodder yeah I'm gonna make that car blow up yeah I'm gonna make this car blow up because you just taught me I can blow up cars yeah it's just it's just like one giant load up sequence slash uh, opportunity to use everything you just loaded up with and, and I know in uh, in this one you actually do have a load up screen uh, for the campaign right you yes. can actually customize your loadout before you go in yeah so for me eventually I, you're using that sort of pick 10 system again and I'll put all my favorite attachments and that sort of thing and there are some restrictions that apply at least the first time you play through obviously they don't want you necessarily uh, you know playing your first time through and taking like a, a future weapon in, in the 80s but uh, but you can eventually do that? Yeah, from what I understand, I believe on your second playthrough, you can. Um, don't quote me on that 100%. I still need to play my second playthrough, but Mitch was telling me there's an achievement tied to that. IGN's Mitchell Dyer. Okay. So, um, I need to find a new gun. So, I mean, if you just ran sort of beyond where these guys were, would it just trigger the next portion oh. of the... Oh, God. <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> we're, we're going to find out, Charles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. It's okay. It's all okay. part of it's all part of the show. Mm. You know, I think they do a pretty good job of gating me from being able to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it seems like. Uh, but I will a little say, too rec I mean, this is also on hard, so it's it's not it's not veteran, but it's also not like the standard difficulty either. Yeah, and I will say that I I don't feel like they this game isn't as egregious with the uh, the whole like you know there's I think in the past they've always done a pretty bad job sometimes with the feeling that there's like monster closets and you have to like reach a certain point before guys will stop spawning and in this I've I never really felt like that was the case okay let's see and so you do get in vehicle sequences throughout uh, <laughs> throughout the game as well so you do uh, you know I mean you were just in a turret there but I guess you, you get in more kind yeah, of large-scale explosive uh, situations yeah there are definitely parts where like you have to do uh, 
there's one mission in particular where you end up flying a jet and you're kind of free form flying it for a brief amount of time, which is pretty different. You know, most of the time they would just make you operate the turret and the jet would kind of fly itself uh, or kind of be on rails. And in and, and this one, they give you direct control. And there's also more bizarre ones where you're operating spy robots or you might have to take direct control of a, uh, of a, a four-legged walking robot. So, um, yeah, they definitely still get that vehicle thing in there, but it's not the traditional sort of operate a tank and just blow everything up. It, it's still, you're usually fighting alongside ground soldiers like this. Um, they just are trying to get across that whole idea of... Uh, drone combat, you know, and unmanned vehicles being a big part of future combat, which, in all likelihood, they will be. Probably. Seems uh -huh. less risky. Although you're risking a lot of money. Yes, that, that's very <laughs> true. I, I am not... <laughs> which, in, in some cases, maybe that's more important, depending on who you're talking to. <laughs> okay. um, and also, I mean, what about the, the shock value? Because that's something that's always come up in yeah. more and more in Call of Duty games, where it's like, oh, how do we one-up ourselves after we did that ridiculous, or, you know, the, the airport shootout is always the right, example of course, people go, of course, no go right. back to. And it's like, well, how do we do something crazier than that? And it's always, do we really need to? Was that really the correct direction to go in the first place? Right. Um, you know, where, where does this game sit in there? Um, yeah, there's that level no Russian. Uh, but uh, in this one, you know, obviously when you first start the game, it's going to ask you, you know, do you want to see offensive, com uh, offensive uh, like, Stuff. Content? Yeah, offensive yeah. content, and so uh, there, there obviously still is some of that, but it's 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 different. Uh, in this one, I will say that there is a part that gets incredibly violent still, and that's I, I, there's obvious parts where that's what they're referring to when you have that disclaimer at the beginning. But uh, I do feel like it's 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 more purposeful in this than it has been in past games. Okay, so um, I mean, it's violence to support whatever they're trying to say more than just violence for violence's sake. It's violence to support how tragic certain characters are in the game. But, I mean, this is still far from sensitive. I mean, how many people did you just murder? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, by the end of the game, I'm going to... You're going to kill, like, a thousand people. You would be the world's worst murderer. Yeah. And, I mean, I think it's funny that they put the... Uh the the warning up that says you know do you want to see violent content and then it does take it <laughs> does take out some graphic violence con violent content but then you go on and you just kill forty guys yeah exactly it's I like mean, well guess what I'm still gonna murder a bunch of people graphic content you may not see a guy get blown up or something but you're gonna see people get shot in the face left and right yeah so yeah that's kind of weird and you know I I mean yeah it's just uh, <laughs> it's still still a disconnect yeah um, but I mean in terms of you know a, a big kind of blockbuster you know the the military shooter genre where it's just kind of this linear heavily scripted thing um you know you would say this does this is a pretty this does a very good job of, of that yeah i would say that this is probably uh a cut above the vast majority of them um you know people in the comments for our review were comparing you know this and halo which to me it's apples and oranges they're very different games um yeah halo halo is more sandboxy a little bit exactly like, they, they sort of dump you into a, a, a large combat arena and then you just have you know a huge selection of enemies running around all with very different ai patterns and uh you know obviously they throw vehicles into the mix there too that you can kind of use if you want to or just blow up so it 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 feels a little bit more experimental in, yeah. in, in Halo, where you're kind of given this toolbox and asked to, uh, you know, figure out how to use it properly, whereas this is more kind of uh, reflex. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Seems. And and again, I just feel like, uh, you know, there are other companies, uh, you know, and other people that have tried to do the sort of military shooter, and I... I the, guys, the guys that, you know, that work on the Call of Duty games, they get it. Like, they know how to do it in a way that that no one else ever quite matches. And maybe that's because they have, you know, way too big of a budget to work with. Well, how many people worked on this game? Like 80 uh, to 90 million? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> when you finish the game and watch the credits, you will notice they are long. Are there the are credits actually longer than the campaign? Yeah, <laughs> not quite, but I will say that they are some of the longest credits I've ever sat through. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it is, it's, it, a lot of work went into this, and, and I think it shows. I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's fun. It's just something. The campaign is a lot of fun and actually has some moments that manage to be successfully emotionally engaging, which is pretty unprecedented in the Call of Duty game. Right. Uh, cool. Well, yeah, next we'll go to a mode that doesn't really make any sense at all. Is <laughs> yeah, no, it's the completely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, which is uh, zombies. All right, Anthony, what is happening right now? We're, we are in the, uh, the most ridiculous of all Call of Duty modes, uh, the zombies mode. So we're actually hopping into what uh, was, you know, before the game came out, they kind of called it the campaign. Um, what it really is, is is it's called transit, and it's it's better likened to an adventure because you kind of come in and, and 
you don't really know what's going on with the world, and so it's kind of up to you guys to kind of experiment and figure it out. And the thing that I like about it is that people get really good at figuring things out. Like, so for instance, we just all worked together and s assembled this turbine from parts we found. It doesn't tell you what this turbine does. <laughs> what did that turbine do? But it powered this door. It just opened this door for us. Oh, okay. Um, it didn't. The fan didn't blow the door open, though. No, no, no. Just to it's, be clear, how that worked. It's literally just a power source. <laughs> okay. Um, and that and that opens the door. Uh, in the first round, and there's a lot of tactics that go into zombie. It's totally different style of gameplay. You know, it's it's still about surviving against waves as long as you can, um, and kind of you earn money for killing zombies, you earn money for rebuilding defenses. But uh, there's a there's just so much strategy that goes into it. Uh, but on top of it, what makes transit kind of special is that uh, we can now. Uh, here, I'm just gonna tell everyone. Or no, they got it. We're gonna get on the bus. And so there's this bus now that will take you around the world and take you to these other areas. Um, and that's kind of what makes it really special. Here, I'm just going to open this door so they'll come. And I mean, just in, in case you've never played Zombies, these it, it's not like you beat this mode. No. You die. I, yeah, I mean, I've never beat it. I'm sure there will be some people that will get through all, the, all of it and find everything and complete it. But, you know, how that sort of ending works is, uh, is really anyone's guess because... The guys at Treyarch play it very t close to their chest. You know, they they do not want anyone to know the secrets of transit. They want them to figure it out. Like, like even when I was playing with them, they wouldn't tell me what the turbine did. They were like, figure it out. You know, that was just <laughs> kind of their their mo with it. So that you know, the whole thing is that this bus will take you around between these different areas, and this teammate better get on. <laughs> okay, whew, he <laughs> almost got left behind. That was really last minute. Um, you can you can walk into the fog, which the bus takes you between these fogged areas relatively safely. The zombies will sit here and chase us, but uh, otherwise, if you wander into the fog, these monsters that look like uh, demon babies will attack you. <laughs> so there's all kinds of hidden things. So if in you were to exit the bus, you would essentially you would encounter one of them. Yeah, except in some areas there are like so there are five I think five uh, areas that you can fight in between and defend, and then there are even areas like this. This is not one of those areas, the main areas, but right there I can see a spot to buy a weapon. This is an area where right now we could get off and kind of explore and see what's out here. But I am way too scared to do that. Also, your bus just drove over like a magma pit. Oh, yeah, there's lava everywhere. And so the lava actually has effects that they don't even explain to you. You just kind of figure out uh, naturally, too. If you uh, if a zombie is on fire and walks over lava, if you shoot it, it will explode and do exploding damage. So that's like another thing you have to take into account. But so yeah, that, I mean, that's actually good, though, right? If I mean, assuming the zombie is in a pack of other zombies and uh, not it, close to it's you. It's mostly that they just get on fire to get as close to you as possible and then blow you up. It becomes a really big issue later on. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, you know, this is super tongue-in-cheek mode. Like, there's this weird, you know, robotic, zombie-looking bus driver. Yeah, it makes sense. It's just like Westworld. Uh, voiced by Nolan North, the same guy who does Nathan Drake. Oh, nice. Um... Yeah, that's, that's a random roll. <laughs> yeah. Well, that guy does. Oh man, uh, this pistol's already worthless. Okay. That's the thing. It, is that your I, bus is like. Oh, so they're gonna explode. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a little explosion, but when they're on top of you, it does a lot of damage. I actually think that we're going to not live very long. <laughs> we're doing okay. <laughs> we're doing really bad, and there's a lot of zombies. Oh god. Okay, Charles. So yeah, I mean, clearly this is this is definitely as, as many modes as are in the uh, the multiplayer. This is something uh, entirely different. Yeah, yeah, and this one you can uh, if you don't want to do the whole roaming around with the bus thing, you can just pick a survival area from the menu and you can just do like the holdout as long as you can in that one area. And then there's also a four v four mode as well, where you fight with uh, your team to see who who can outlast the other team. Um, but yeah, you still have this, the same sort of... So there's kind of, of a competitive element there. Exactly. And you still have these random uh, mystery boxes that give you strange, you know, presents. Uh, like a pistol. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. I know that there usually a, there's usually a part in here. Um, oh. So, I mean, this does seem like a, a pretty big upgrade for the, the zombie portion of the Treyarch Call of Duty. Yeah, you know, originally in World of War, zombies was just sort of a, an Easter egg after the credits that there was, like, one map and that was all you could do, and... Uh, and now it's like this, f I mean, it is a full on mode with like, it's become an entirely different game. Exactly. And so like they have a whole team that works on this now, you know, like working and designing zombies and trying to create like, 
there isn't necessarily a lore that they'll beat you over the head with, but there's a lot of things that kind of get implied to you throughout the uh, playing this as you discover new areas and that sort of thing. So you're saying Michael Rooker is not in the zombies? No, movie. he's not. The four characters in this are totally ridiculous. Like, you know, you have this like a uh, this kind of like a uh, very hick redneck style girl, and then the, there's the one guy that looks like uh, the the John Goodman's character in Big Lebowski. Um, I thought you were gonna say arachnophobia. Oh no! Well, that would be even better. <laughs> the exterminator. Um, I'm pretty sure John Goodman played an exterminator. He did. In Arachnophobia. He did. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm. Uh, but when you get downed, this is when things get really bad. Well, right. It's gonna blow up if you shoot him. Right? We're already on way four, and my pistol is just pretty much worthless. Yeah, you're gonna need to. I uh, should. I should have upgraded. Get some upgrades there. But I was spending my money to do things like open doors for people. Uh, we could get back the on the bus, bus and leave. The bus is honking at you. Oh, now it's driving. Okay, it seems like the bus shouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the I thing. I mean, not that the zombies are entirely realistic. Well, but okay, not, now... Not everyone got on the bus. Now there's just a problem. Can they catch up? Yeah, so you can... Can you run faster than the bus drives? Uh-oh, you're into the mist. Are we going to see demon babies? Uh... Yeah. Is he going to attack by a demon baby? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's really creepy looking. It's like got a giant head. Yeah. Let me see if I can revive her. Oh. Oh no. I can I can knife it off me. Oh god, <laughs> but the zombies caught up. Hey, achievement. Thank I, you. <laughs> I I <laughs> we I made a mistake coming back for her. We've made a huge mistake. Yeah. Um but yeah, this is how typically zombies plays out. You do it, you 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 have a failing and then you learn from that so that the next time you jump in, you apply the knowledge that you have now gained to the next time. And so you start to develop a routine and serve sort of a language where you're like, "Okay, after two rounds, we go to the gas station. After round four, we go to the barn. After one round at the barn, we go to the science lab, or as we called it, Cabin in the Woods. And if you play it, you'll figure out why we call it that. Okay, spoilers. So, um, but yeah, there's always something to be learned. And even when you fail like like we did, it's it's, it's and so not there, bad. And there, so there is an end to it. Yeah, there's definitely an uh, – well, Maybe. yeah, I believe there Pro is an probably. end. Yes, but I've never even gotten past uh, wave nine. So um, – this this person's trying. They're they're still they're holding out. He wrote it. He wrote it all the way to the barn. So, but I don't. I think he's yeah, like I, it's it's basically over for him. I don't think it's gonna work. He can if he f if he fights off the wave, we respawn. But you know, we neither her or I have very much money. So even if we respawned, we wouldn't be very much good to anyone. Okay. So I mean, at this point, we've gone over pretty much all all of the con. And obviously, we haven't seen all of the content, but gone over pretty much all of the content that's in Black Ops Two. So Anthony, would you say that um, I you know is this your favorite Call of Duty game? Oh yeah, for sure, hands down. Like uh, you know, I I enjoy a lot of the Call of Duty games, but this one, like the zombies mode, is is actually really a lot of fun. Oh, he managed to make us respawn. Uh, for all the good that's gonna do. Um, the zombies mode's really good. Uh, the the single player campaign really is surprising and actually you know manages to tell a really good story in my opinion. And the multiplayer with the pick ten thing is is pretty exciting all over again so yeah to me i think that uh the next you know we don't know if it'll be modern warfare 4 but i'd be very surprised if it wasn't yeah. it's gonna have its work cut out for it to to kind of step up from where this one's being okay Take well yeah i mean if moving forward i mean obviously this is <laughs> this is a popular game people like call of duty who knew yeah um but uh yeah you can expect to see more black ops 2 coverage on ign in the future